Are your story views at an all-time low? Does it feel like back in the day you could get way more views on your Instagram stories, but recently it's become a lot tougher? Well, getting more views on your Instagram stories absolutely has become tougher over the last few years, and one of the big reasons for that is because of a change in the Instagram stories algorithm. And so in today's episode of Build Your Tribe, I, as your host, Brock Johnson, am going to walk you through the changes in the algorithm, what you should avoid in order to keep your story views high, and I will be sharing with you an easy four-step formula that has been proven to significantly boost your story views. We're talking about 2x, 3x, even some people experiencing 10x the number of views on their Instagram stories in just a 24-hour period thanks to this four-step formula. Before we hop into things, I will quickly say that if there are any members of the Insta Club Hub who are watching or listening to this podcast right now, we have actually done an in-depth live training on exactly what I'm about to cover today in the Insta Club Hub, where we go much more in-depth. We give more tutorials and more examples of the things I'm about to be sharing with you. But nonetheless, I know a lot of you are not quite Insta Clubbers yet, or maybe you have no idea what the Insta Club Hub is. So let me just get right into sharing with you what are some big things that you need to avoid on your Instagram stories. The first thing that I would recommend avoiding is posting a ton of Instagram stories. And if you want me to put an exact number on it, I would recommend not posting more than five Instagram stories within a 24 hour period. Now, this already might be mind blowing to a lot of people and might shock a lot of people because this is a complete opposite of what we used to teach and what everyone used to believe to be true on Instagram. And it's because this is what used to be true with the old algorithm. The old Instagram stories algorithm really used to prioritize recently posted stories. And so it made sense for you to post a new Instagram story every couple of hours throughout the day to make sure that your story was at the front of the queue and to make sure that you were getting more views. We used to recommend posting posting at least 10 Instagram stories every single day if your goal was maximum views. Because again, the thought was if you were posting regularly, you were constantly being moved back to the front of the lineup, and thus you were going to accumulate more views throughout that 24-hour period. But now the algorithm has changed, so less is more. The less stories you post in a 24-hour period, typically the more views your stories will get. In fact, according to some recent data that we have been collecting, each subsequent story that you post within a 24-hour period lowers your total views for that 24-hour period by about 15 to 20%. And now you might be asking, why has this change taken place besides just the fact that the algorithm is now different? Essentially, what the algorithm is now prioritizing is is engagement per story. So the total amount of engagement, positive engagement that is. Now you might be asking yourself, why has this change taken place? Why is the algorithm different? Essentially what the algorithm is now prioritizing rather than just how many stories have you posted in a 24 hour period is the amount of positive engagement per story. Let me break down what that equation essentially means. Positive engagement is a form of interaction that shows attention. So if someone is liking your story, if they are replying to your story, if you have one of those stickers on your story that has maybe a poll or a slider bar, those sorts of things are positive engagement. Other forms of positive engagement include holding your finger down on the Instagram story, thus pausing it and extending the watch time of the story, or tapping on the left-hand side of the screen to start the story over or to go back to the previous story. All of those things are considered positive forms of engagement. Negative forms of engagement are tapping on the right hand side of the screen, thus skipping the story, swiping from the right to the left, thus skipping the entire story for that day, or completely closing out of Instagram stories or the Instagram app as a whole. Those are negative forms of engagement. And then of course, someone can just not engage with your story, like if they just open it and kind of let it play all the way through. But according to our recent data, that is extremely unlikely. And about 90 to 95% of story viewers will interact in some way, either positively or negatively. So essentially the algorithm is looking at how much positive engagement is each story getting? So how does this relate to the total number of stories that you've posted? Well, if you have posted 10 stories in a 24 hour period, unless each of those 10 stories is extremely engaging, it's likely that as time progresses, people will get bored, people will tap on the right side of the screen to move to the next slide, people will swipe away altogether, or maybe you just don't have a way for them to engage with every single one of those 10 stories. Think about the last time you opened up Instagram stories and someone had multiple little dashes, thus multiple little stories posted at that time. 
most likely they didn't have a way to engage with every single story. And even if they did, you probably didn't engage with every single one of those stories. And thus, because of this, the overall number of total positive engagement divided by the total number of stories is worse. So again, the first thing that I would recommend doing is posting less stories per day. And hopefully that's a positive word of encouragement or a, a breath of fresh air for a lot of people because I know back in the day when I used to say, you know, post 10 stories per day, it was overwhelming for people and it felt like another thing that you have to do, more content that you have to create. But now you don't have to post as much content. You don't have to create as much for your Instagram stories. You can get by with just a couple of Instagram stories per day or less. We'll get to that later. The second thing that I would recommend avoiding on your Instagram stories is talking head videos. I would recommend posting the least amount of talking head videos possible. And by talking head videos, I mean where you are just talking to the camera, FaceTime style, selfie style. You know, you just have your phone, you have the Instagram stories open and you're just recording yourself talking for 60 seconds or so and then posting that to your Instagram stories. Those I would highly recommend avoiding on your Instagram stories and there's a few reasons for that. Number one, as the consumer, AKA the the viewer of that talking head video, it's almost impossible to interact with that video. The only options I have if I am watching one of your talking head stories is to hold my finger down and pause the story, tap on the right side to skip ahead, which again, remember that is a negative form of engagement, skipping to the next story, or tapping on the left-hand side of the screen and skipping back to the very beginning. There's no way for me to slow it down, to speed it up. If I miss a single word or sentence, there's no way for me to rewind a few seconds and rewatch it. I have to either commit to rewatching the entire story, or I'm going to do what most people do, which is just skip the rest of the story and say, eh, it was probably not that important. I'm just going to skip it. And that's really why talking head Instagram stories are hurting views so much is that they are getting consistent forms of negative engagement. People will watch for 10, 15 seconds. They'll get bored. A human attention span is constantly getting shorter. And so they'll skip to your next slide or they'll skip your story altogether, which again, both of those things are negative forms of engagement. So unless you have something super juicy, you have something that just has to be delivered via talking head or something that wouldn't make sense posted as a text post or something Something else, I would recommend avoiding talking head stories. Also, another big problem that we have all run into with Instagram stories as the creator of the stories is that stories originally were 15 seconds long. So we were very handcuffed. We could only put maybe one, two, or if you talked fast, three sentences in that 15 second window. And then we had to stop and record a new 15 seconds. It forced us to be concise. It forced us to be to the point. And if someone missed something, even if they were almost at the end of the video, at most they would have to watch like 12 seconds to get back to where they were, which isn't that big of a deal. But then Instagram made it so that we could record 60 seconds at once, and then Instagram would chop it into four 15-second segments. So it was still not bad, but all of a sudden now we could record 60 seconds. And now Instagram has made it so that we can post 60 seconds without having it cut into those 15-second clips. And so what are we doing as content creators and business owners? We're taking up the full 60 seconds. If you give me 60 seconds to speak, I'm gonna talk for 60 seconds. We're all yappers, especially when we get on our Instagram stories. We have lost this ability to be concise, to be clear and direct because we don't have to be. We can kind of ramble on. We can diverge and go on these other sub paths and go down these rabbit holes and we can get lost within our train of thought. And so because of that, we've all rambled on a little bit. And it's kind of like when you're having a conversation with someone at a dinner party and they just won't stop talking. Like your eyes have glazed over. You're not paying attention anymore. You're thinking about something else, but they're just still yapping away. The same thing is happening when people are watching your Instagram stories and you're talking for 60 seconds straight. Now, don't get me wrong. There are definitely people who can be really captivating for 60 seconds and who can hold our attention for 60 seconds. But for most of us, I would recommend not using the full 60 seconds. And if you do have to take up the full 60 seconds because it just is, like I said, that engaging, that captivating, or something that has to be shared via a talking head story, record the full 60 seconds, save it to your camera roll, and then once it's in your camera roll, chop it up into shorter bite-sized bits. Like chop it up into one sentence at a time or even you know 15 seconds at a time, just so it's a little bit easier on the consumer to be able to watch said story without having to completely rewind or just skip it altogether. The third thing that I would recommend doing less of on your Instagram stories is sharing your feed posts to your stories. Now, I need you to hear me out on this one because the first time I ever posted about this on Instagram, it kind of went viral because people were like, oh my gosh, this is so controversial. What the heck? Why would I not share my feed post to my story? This doesn't make any sense. Let me explain. 
If your goal is to get more views on your feed post, so your reel, your photo, your carousel, if your goal is to get more views on your feed post, then yes, it would benefit you to share it to your story because any views that your stories get that day count as views on your reel. And of course, it just increases the likelihood that someone even knows that you made a feed post, that they go and engage with it, they comment, share, like, whatever. It increases that likelihood. So yes, if your goal is to get more views on the feed, share it to your story. However, if your goal is to increase your story views, which I'm going to assume it is, that's why you clicked on this video, that's why you're listening to me yap my head off, it's going to be beneficial to not share your feed posts to your stories. Studies have shown, and Instagram's CEO has confirmed this himself, when people are sharing their feed posts to their stories, story views go down. And last but not least, the fourth thing that I would recommend avoiding on your Instagram stories is using the link sticker too much or really honestly using the link sticker at all. Using the link sticker has been proven to decrease your views and I think it's essentially because when people click on that link sticker, it is a negative form of engagement because they are leaving your Instagram story. And of course, that's the minority of people who are actually clicking on the sticker, whereas the majority of people are likely just swiping and skipping your entire story altogether because they're not in the mood to be sold to. So really all of these changes to the Instagram stories algorithm can be summed up by saying less is more. Less total stories, less talking head stories, less feed posts shared to your stories, and less link stickers in your Instagram stories. If you stop watching or listening to this podcast right now and you just follow those four things, your story views are likely going to slightly increase over the next few weeks. But if you do the four-step formula that I'm about to walk you through, your story views will skyrocket almost immediately. Like within the 24-hour period that this formula is implemented, you will see a big spike in views. Nothing is a guarantee on social media, but this is one of those things that's super close to a guarantee, and it's actually not necessarily a new trick or hack. It's something that's actually been around for quite a while, and when it was first created, I was a big doubter of it. I was like, there's no way this will work. I doubt it. Like the, It's just, it goes against everything that I've been teaching. It goes against everything that we've been seeing in the data. But over the last few years, we've seen a big shift, like I've been talking about, in the stories algorithm. And so now this four-step formula works better than ever, and I do it on a weekly basis. And besides just regularly, routinely doing this four-step formula, I use it strategically when I want to boost my views. So if I have a post that I really wanna make sure people see, or if I have a message that I wanna make sure gets across, or if I, this is really the one where I use it the most, if I have a sale or a promotion or a freebie or a lead magnet that I really wanna reach the maximum possible people, that's when I will use this strategy. And actually just last week, I used this strategy and achieved my highest viewed Instagram story of all time, which I know I haven't told you the four-step formula yet. It just proves that this formula can be used over and over and over again, even on a weekly basis. It's not like you use it once and you're done. You can use it whenever you want to strategically boost your Instagram story views. All right, now with all of that out of the way, let's walk through this four-step formula. And the first one or two steps you might be familiar with, especially if you've kind of been in this world of trying to grow on Instagram or subscribing to Instagram coaches, following us and, and following our tips and advice. You might've heard the first two steps before, but it's really in step three and step four where the new algorithm is going to reward you the heaviest. So step one of part of this formula is to let all of your existing stories expire. So if you posted a story right at the beginning of this podcast, you're gonna have to wait 24 hours for that story to expire. If you posted a story seven hours ago, do 24 minus seven, which is 17, wait 17 hours for all of your ex stories to expire. Essentially, you should have nothing on your Instagram stories. That's step one. And what this allows is essentially your equation can reset. The algorithm can reset. Remember earlier when we talked about that equation of total amount of positive engagement divided by total number of stories posted. Well, if you have zero engagement divided by zero stories, it's reset, right? It's totally undefined. There is no metric for the algorithm to look at. And so it kind of wipes the slate clean. Step number two is to wait an additional 24 hours as a minimum. Now, if you're really antsy or if you're short on time, if you're watching this the day before you need your stories to spike because you're doing a launch tomorrow, you don't have to wait the full 24 hours. But if you want the best possible results, I would recommend waiting at least 24 hours after your stories have expired. So if you posted a story on 
Tuesday at three in the afternoon. That story would expire on Wednesday at three in the afternoon. And I would recommend waiting until Thursday at three in the afternoon before you do step three of this four step formula. Step three is to post a single text post story. And there are multiple criteria that I'm going to recommend to you within this single text post story. The first one is obviously in the name. It's a text post story. So it's not talking head. It's not a photo. It is either a blank background or a very simple image with text on top of it, a text based story. If you want an example of this, check out my highlights on Instagram. Brock 11 Johnson is my Instagram handle. If you look at my highlights, you will see some great examples of what this looks like, but really don't overcomplicate it. It is a black background with white text or just a solid color with a solid piece of text that's easy to read on top of it. Within that text, the first sentence needs to be a hook, something that is going to grab people's attention. If you need help coming up with hooks, we do have a free list of hooks. It's down in the show notes below. Uh, 25 viral hooks. We researched a couple hundred viral posts on both Instagram and TikTok. We transcribed all of them and then we basically just compiled a list of the top 25 most frequently occurring hooks. And so that is free for you to download. It's in the show notes below. That's what I would recommend starting your text post story with. So again, a single story with text and the first sentence of that text is a hook that's going to grab people's attention and stop their scroll. Or I guess if they're watching your Instagram stories, stop their tapping. Then after that initial hook, you're going to add multiple paragraphs of text. Now this is a part where often people will be like, what I'm writing paragraphs. I just mean like one to two sentence, you know, sentence chunks or blocks, if you will. It doesn't have to be a five to eight sentence long MLA style paragraph like we learned in high school. It can just be, you know, a sentence or two, you know, skip a, two, a few lines, a sentence or two, skip a few lines, three sentences, skip a few lines, but at least two to three paragraphs of text. And I know this might be surprising. This is might be very different than what you've been posting on your Instagram stories, but here's why this works. We're putting lots of text on this singular Instagram story. So the viewer, in order to read said text, is going to hold their finger down on the screen, thus pausing your story, which is a positive form of engagement, in order to read all of that text. If you were to only put one sentence, they might be able to read that sentence without having to hold their finger down. That's why we want multiple sentences, if not multiple paragraphs of text. And in addition to holding their finger down, the watch time is also increasing, which is another form of positive engagement. Usually photo or text-based Instagram stories, really anything that is a non-video that you're posting to your Instagram stories, will be up for five seconds or seven seconds. And so if someone's holding their finger down to read those multiple paragraphs and it takes them 10 seconds or 15 seconds, that is a significant significantly higher watch rate than the average Instagram story. And this is a really uh, positive form of engagement for your Instagram story. Then once we have those multiple paragraphs written, we are going to end the text with a call to action, but not just any call to action. We are going to encourage people to respond to the story with a specific keyword in order to receive something in return. Essentially, we are going to use DM automation. My favorite tool for DM automation is ManyChat, but I know there are multiple out there. ManyChat is the most common and the most widely used. I also think it's the easiest to use and the one that I would trust the most, but hey, do your own research to find whatever uh, DM automation tool you prefer. But essentially what's going on here is people are responding with a keyword that you tell them to, and then when they do so, they are getting something in response. Maybe it's a free download, maybe it's a guide, maybe it's a list of recommendations, maybe it's a recipe. But again, going back to the idea of positive forms of engagement, a reply is one of the highest ranking positive forms of engagement. And usually getting replies to your Instagram stories can be kind of challenging. But when you give people a direct word, just one singular word, it's easy for them to type. They don't have to think about it. They can just type what you said to type and they're not not just responding for your sake, they're responding for their sake because now they're going to get something, again, usually like a freebie or a download or a recipe or a guide, just something of value in exchange for a few letters typed into the reply bar. Again, if you look at any of my highlights on my Instagram profile, you'll see plenty of examples of this. I have multiple paragraphs of text and then at the bottom it will say something like, reply 55 stories and I'll send you 55 story ideas or reply 25 hooks and I'll send you 25 hook ideas. Is. That's what's going on here. People are sending me that keyword. It's helping my story get more views. And in exchange for sending me that keyword, 
I am sending them the free guide, the free download, whatever it may be. So if you were someone who was worried about not using the link sticker anymore because you were like, how am I gonna get people on my email list? How am I going to sell my product? How am I going to get more customers? This is how, instead of using the link sticker, you are going to tell people to respond with a keyword and then in exchange, you're going to send them the link. So it's just adding an extra layer into it, thus helping your engagement, thus helping your story reach more people. And I would argue that it actually is better from the consumer point of view because I can't tell you how many times I have clicked on a link sticker on someone's Instagram stories, but then either the link hasn't worked or the form hasn't operated correctly or I've gotten distracted or I've gotten a text or a phone call or whatever. I've just lost that link. And now the only only way that I can get that link back is if I go back to that person's story. If I remember who it was, I find the person's story, I tap through all their other stories, and then I tap on the link sticker. That's confusing. That's challenging. Instead, it's much easier if I just reply with a keyword, and now I have the link in my DM inbox. So it's much easier to find. It's top of mind. If I go to that link in my DM inbox and something goes wrong, I can message the person right there. I can follow up. I can ask questions. Or if I just get distracted, I can come back to the link later. And so from both the consumer perspective and the producer, creator, business owner perspective, I think it's really beneficial to use DM automation. That was step three though, the long text post Instagram story. And a big key with that was it's a single text post. It's a single story. And so step four in this four step formula is that you are posting no more stories for the remaining 24 hours. Once you post that singular text post story, we're posting nothing else. No talking head, no sharing our reel to our stories, no extra stories, no disclaimer, no backstory, nothing else. Just one singular story for all of 24 hours. Let that story expire. Once the 24 hours are up, you can go back to willy nilly posting whatever Instagram stories you want. But for those 24 hours, just let it sit there, let it breathe. And usually you'll see within the first few hours, if not the first few minutes, the story views are going way up. They are spiking like crazy. Again, this is something that I do on a weekly basis. It's something that I definitely do whenever I want to get more views for a sale or a promotion or a specific idea that I want more people to hear about. And so go ahead, give this a try for yourself and then let me know in the comments. Watch this video, give it a try and then come back and let me know in the comments down below this YouTube video, what do you think, did it work for you? Have you tried this before and was it effective in the past? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and before you go, I did wanna let you know, those 55 story ideas that I briefly mentioned earlier, that is something that's free for you as well. Down in the show notes, you can find 55 Instagram story ideas that are free for you and they are proven to help you make more sales on Instagram. So if you use those 55 Instagram story ideas, you mix it in with this four-step formula and you avoid those four things that I talked about at the beginning of today's episode, you will get more views and more sales on your Instagram stories. Thank you so much for listening and as always, happy networking. Yeah.